For decades, readers of obscure fiction have marveled at the notion of eldritch beings, otherworldly, ancient, and often enormous creatures that dwell in the depths of the ocean or in outer space. H.P. Lovecraft's creation, the Cthulhu Mythos, is one of the oldest and greatest inspirations for the appearance of eldritch beings in modern media. According to Lovecraft, there are several kinds of eldritch beings. The greatest of these are called Outer Gods. They are beings many times larger than planets that live at the center of infinity, also known as the Central Void. Their consciousness permeates all of real outer space, as well as the dreamlands. They are blind, mute, and mindless, yet their power exceeds any other creature in the universe. The greatest of the outer gods is Azathoth, the lord of all creation. These beings both subjugate and protect a lesser strain of powerful beings, the Great Old Ones. The Great Old Ones are ancient, primordial entities that inhabit planets. Throughout time, they have been worshipped as gods by many species on our world and on others. They are gargantuan by human standards, although they are tiny compared to the outer gods, and they are said to possess psychic abilities through which they can commune with the lesser beings that inhabit the planet around them. The creature Cthulhu is the best known of Lovecraft's great old ones. Although not born on Earth, it has lived there since its early days, and was an influence on many developments on Earth prior to the advent of the historical record. Although today, Cthulhu is said to exist in a death-like state of hibernation at the bottom of the ocean or underground, his voice can still be heard. Through the dreamlands, he still whispers into the hearts of men. There are several lesser beings among Lovecraft's creations, many of which are servants of the Great Old Ones. The Shoggoth, or the Deep Ones, are octopus-like or ichthyic servants of Cthulhu. Other lesser beings such as Flying Polyps or the Hounds of Tindalos remain unbound and roam space or between dimensions in search of conquest. Eldritch beings are pervasive in modern popular culture. In video games such as World of Warcraft, where they appear as the Old Gods, or Bloodborne, where they appear as the Great Ones, again ancient, bizarre-looking subterranean aliens. In popular TV shows like Stranger Things, where the Mind Flayer serves as an example of a powerful eldritch being, there is something about the concept of strange and terrible creatures so much more powerful than ourselves that has captivated so many over the last century. The feeling of dread it imparts to consider that our place in the cosmos is smaller than small. And in recent decades, this macabre fascination with our own powerlessness has led to some searching for the beyond in our own backyard. In 2018, Spanish researchers studying the behavior of Atlantic squids made a surprising discovery. The researchers observed that during a hunt, the squids were able to coordinate their movements so quickly that it could not be explained by their sensory abilities alone. All thousands of squid in the shoal appeared to make the decision to attack larger prey at the same time. Even when spread out over a square kilometer and in conditions where sight was impossible, at first, they believed this was due to chemosensing, but after capturing a squid and bringing it up to a tank on the boat, they found that it still displayed aggressive behavior at the same time as its shoal in the ocean below. Using brainwave mapping technology, they observed in the captured squid that when the group moved to attack large prey in the ocean below, the part of its brain involved in hearing was being activated. Even though no signal was coming from its statusists, the organ responsible for detecting acoustic vibrations in squids. The researchers concluded that the squid were able to whisper to each other over distances as great as 15 kilometers. This was the first evidence of something resembling telepathy in animals. The same group tried to test this phenomenon in other cephalopods, namely the behavioral study on octopuses in 2020, but they found that even during group hunts, octopuses do not exhibit this whispering behavior. Just earlier this year, 
In February 2022, a squid at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, known by the staff to normally have a gentle temperament, suddenly began exhibiting aggressive behavior. Veterinarians conducted several tests and found that the squid was perfectly healthy, but that region of its brain responsible for processing hearing was extremely active, even in the absence of sound. Being in Chicago, there were no other squid around for hundreds of kilometers, and experts and veterinarians believe the squid had a previously uncharacterized brain disorder, but conspiracy theorists online have suggested these were real whispers coming from a subterranean source, that the creature had heard the call of a great old one slumbering within the earth. The core of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers deep, and the deepest humans have ever dug is merely 12 kilometers. We have quite literally only scratched the surface. If there were something lurking beneath the bedrock, no matter how large, we would never know it was there. This became apparent in 2021, when a group of Japanese deep sea divers made a discovery in the western Pacific. A week prior, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked the Pacific Ocean off the eastern coast of Indonesia, tearing a fresh divide between the New Hebrides and Pacific tectonic plates. Underwater volcanic activity was still raging a week later. The group had to be careful to navigate around active flows when they noticed something strange protruding up from some of the cooled crust. A hexagonal stone pillar with symmetrical pictorial carvings. It seemed that an earlier lava flow had pushed it up to the surface of the ocean floor. The group made their way into what remained of the chasm and found gaps in the cooled crust to dive into a previously unexplored cave. Within the cave, they made an unprecedented discovery. The ruins of a city that looked like it had folded in on itself before sinking under the sea. The designs and architecture seemed alien, so unlike the designs of any civilization previously thought to be on Earth. Subsequent expert dives and analysis estimate that the structures may be two to three hundred thousand years old, long before Homo sapiens even existed. Some have compared the finding to Plato's lost city of Atlantis, a mythical, sunken city that many have thought to lay at the depths of the Atlantic. But of course, being in the Pacific Ocean, this comparison is merely one of intrigue. Research of the sunken city is ongoing, but there is evidence that within it is a great deal of technology that can only operate subnautically, suggesting that the city was built underwater to begin with. This notion has the scientific community on edge, as it appears humanity is not Earth's first brush with intelligent life. Could it be that intelligence evolved in the oceans first? And if so, who were these aquatic people who lived so close to the core of our planet? While these two recent findings are the strongest pieces of evidence for the existence of eldritch beings on Earth, several other accounts of anecdotal evidence have emerged over the years. In particular, one type of creature has been sighted only four times in the last 200 years, but has such a unique description that it stands out as being distinct. Unlike other supposed eldritch beings, it is usually reported in areas of high elevation. First reported in the Andes Mountains of Chile in 1890, a physician named Max Castillo was hiking when he felt a presence over his shoulder. He turned to see what he described as an angel of hell. The creature appeared as a dark blur, he wrote, as if the beat of its wings were so fast I could not focus on them. It hovered a few meters past the edge of the cliff, watching me with its six eyes that lined the crest of its uppermost wings. It did not follow me, and I did not see it appear, and as I rounded the corner of the mountain road I never saw it again. Max's son later recalled that his father hadn't been sure of the number of wings of the creature while he was awake, but during his night terrors his father would often cry out that he had seen six. 
The sighting forever changed Max's life. He became unfit to practice medicine and retired from his position early to live in a cottage. Max had often also spoken about the presence of the creature, the feeling of dread that filled him when it appeared, a feeling that he claimed never subsided for as long as he lived. He described the innermost set of the creature's eyes as light-seeing, the second pair of eyes as soul-seeing, and the third pair as time-seeing. He believed the creature was reading his thoughts and knew how he would die. The other sightings of this creature were documented in 1912 in the Alps, in 1935 on the cliffs of Dover, and most recently over the lighthouse of Cape Agulhas in South Africa in 1977. Each time, the creature appeared to only one individual when they were alone, and imparted the same feeling of dread as they silently watched. Some believe that these sightings depict biblically accurate angels, while fans of Lovecraft's work believe them to be descriptive of flying polyps. The earth, our home, is so much older than we are, and hidden below its crust are surely countless secrets beyond our comprehension. But whether you look into the earth or the stars beyond, and whatever the truth of these matters may be, it is humbling to consider our place as a tiny species confined to the surface of a small sphere floating through infinity.